Call to order the January 23rd, 2021 City Council work session. Call to order and approval of the agenda. So moved. Second. All in favor? Yes. Okay. Yes. Hey. Our public comment and our whole meeting is about the Cannon Beach Elementary School project. Um, we have been just jumping right into these, but I always ask if staff has anything they would need to say first. Yes, sir. Uh, Sam, I have two things I'd like to say. Okay. Um, first, uh, we, we will be having Dick Bash and Doug Dewar giving a presentation to the council at the February 9th workshop. So um, that's when we will be hearing from the tribe. And also this is the last of the scheduled input sessions. We don't know what's gonna happen after this. Council will meet and decide what the next steps are, but um, there will be opportunities for input throughout this entire process. And I appreciate everybody that's taking the time to uh, make a comment. So I ask. Okay. Um, I need to tell Jennifer and Kelly that I got two letters that I want to try and get up to you. They were hand, hand given to me. I can't do it online. So I'll get them to you that should be included in the tabulations. Yeah. Um, I, I'll do that on Monday or Tuesday. Yeah, I do. I have a question for Bruce. And that's, did he have any, uh, give any tours on Friday? Yes, uh, I think there were about five or six. No, I'm sorry. It was probably closer to 10 on Friday. Good. Wow. And did you have people today too? No, we didn't do it today. We did it. Oh. We were doing it the day before the, the meetings. Oh, okay. Great. Okay. Now let me get back to my speaker list. Jennifer sent me and I keep losing. Okay. We have input from Jennifer Wyman or Erica Gunther. We see them both. No. Yes. Go one at a time. Jennifer, why don't you start? Unmute yourself. There you go. There we go. Okay. Hi. Hello. So um, I want to thank everyone, Mayor Sam and the City Council for encouraging public input today. I also want to acknowledge that Kelly Ennis's presentation last Saturday for a Coast Educational Center was very organized and encouraging. And I appreciate the vision she and Angela Benton had for a nature interpretive center that promotes environmental stewardship. So it's exciting to hear so many ideas coming on behalf of this project, community gardens, music theater, sports venues. Oh, it, um, oh, oh, okay. She's a beautiful lady. We're gonna no, start her no. video. Here she is. <laughs> Hello. Loser? I'm here. Um, is the video presenting? No. Oh, okay. Um, we're trying to connect right now. Thanks for your patience. Like to come to mind um, it doesn't matter as long as you have my presentation. Is that right? We can post, we can play the PowerPoint you sent from, the, from our end. Okay. Okay, great. So let me just finish with my introduction and then we can just play. Thank you, Jennifer. So um, it's been exciting to hear how many ideas on behalf of this project have come in, the community gardens, music, theater, arts and sports venues, and supporting the Native American community as well. So that's all great stuff. My hope today is that in this presentation, some of our suggestions can be used to complement other people's ideas and visions. So Briefly, my family has been in the area for over 25 years. My children did attend Kennedy Beach Elementary, and currently my husband and I have a son attending Seaside High School as a senior. And recently, my daughter Erica Gunther and I opened a small business at Sandpiper Square for children and their families that encourages creative expression through the arts and crafts. 
So our family is originally from St. Louis in 1997. Individuals in the downtown area purchased a dilapidated 100-year-old shoe factory building. And through hard work and aggressive public and private fundraising, they created a premier city children's museum. And that model, their model, what happened in St. Louis is the vision for our proposal today. So um, having said that, I'm ready to just share a little bit. So, um, and I will, I guess I'll prompt you to go to the next page. Um, something to be considered, a Children's Coast Museum that would serve as an art collective specifically serving the Pacific Northwest Coast. Next. Hi, Kelly. The mission is for a place that everyone can gather and play and grow. And we believe that that space matters. And obviously, we all know it's located in Clatsop County. So we're hoping that this um, museum would offer an atmosphere of, for all to experiment, create, and learn. The goal is to encourage memorable experiences in a safe and fun environment that promotes exploration, education, and discovery. And why it fits. The Children's Coast Museum can complement the community atmosphere while highlighting what's unique about our Pacific Northwest while encouraging unity among Oregon's diverse groups. Next. The proposal um, to use this space as an intentional refurbished space uh, designed for the Pacific Northwest Coast, children, families, and developing communities, while encouraging educational success for children, incorporating arts and science. Next. Obviously, this is our target audience. You all know this information, statistics, a million dollar multi-night visitors each year to Seaside alone. The revenue generated for all local businesses is just, uh, the potential is exciting for our hotels, restaurants, and other attractions. Next. Who else is involved? My daughter and I really um, want to include uh, other people, groups that perhaps have not been considered the Coast Guard, um, Rotary. Next. And so I've given you um, the St. Louis Museum webs page. And what has happened for them over the years is displays, their displays and events continue to evolve. There's always something new. Um, also museum impact, the Maritime Museum promotes art, we know this, heritage, culture. They had in 2014, which was the most current statistic I could find, over 100,000 visitors annually. We know the Newport Aquarium is one of um, Oregon's top tourist attractions with 40,000 students alone visiting and the Portland Children's Museum is just brilliant with 300,000 visitors annually. Next. So why now? It encourages community involvement. It's offering something positive and healthy for people to do together. It would represent what makes the Oregon Coast special, encouraging pride in our heritage, history and work, while showcasing beautiful artworks and innovative children's activities. Next. And the vision um, exhibits arts, gardens, you can include sports, uh, gift shop, concessions, camps, birthday parties. Next. So we broke this down into four, what could be um, four different exhibit areas, focusing on earth, sea, sky, and then the create. So what you're going to see are pictures of uh, different experiences that fit under these titles. And next. So this is Earth. We have focused on what we all see daily around us, the construction going on, organic farm markets, pines, you know, our forest, our beautiful forest, um, biking. So go ahead and we'll go to the next slide and here's what they're doing around the country. You have these um, diggers, you have uh, marble tracks, walls filled with uh, magnetic building forms. And next, organic farm markets. Look at these just charming barns, little people tables. You're picking your produce. Next. 
pine noodle force. These are fun. These are pool noodles. The kids are running and playing through them. Next. Trike Town. We did this in St. Louis. This was outdoors. You had kids, they, they learn how to follow directions. Very interactive with families. Next. The sea, we focus on bubbles and boats and what's happening, like Kelly shared last week, um, on our coast shores, Dungeness crabs, crab pots. So you'll see um, some suggestions that are, again, what other museums are doing. So next page, please. Mini boats, fishing. Next. Bubble rooms. These are just wonderful, wonderful interactive displays. Next. Um, this is where my heart is really at, is to use the outdoor area in some kind of sculpture garden form with interactive fountains. This is a children's hospital. I believe it's back east, but I love they've made, you know, you see the giant starfish, the slides into water pools. Next. Sky. We see rainbows all the time around here. People are climbing rocks. We have, you know, the eagles. So our suggestions are next in the next page. Um, rock climbing walls. Continue. Big bird nest. The children play in the bird nest. You can make a giant tree. Whammock rope climbs, building rainbows. And finally, the creative element, um, something that our community is just really, you know, has established itself on the coast. This is all outdoor. We had this giant, you'll see this picture of this giant caterpillar. This was outside a butterfly house. Lavender gardens, surfboard sculptures, giant turtles. So I would love to see, um, I, I've appreciated the different outdoor sculptures we have in Cannon Beach and I just kind of like to enlarge uh, that their presence. Next. Then, you know, this is interactive lawn play. These are huge chess boards. Adirondack chairs with children building fire camps. Large movable sculptures, splash and plays. Art rooms. <laughs> Had your decor coming into the museums. And finally, how are we going to pay for it? So, um, we looked at, I have looked at various foundations and grants. I have a list that's been accumulated. Um, you can, corporate sponsors, individual family sponsors, and then you're, you're charging for admissions. So you can charge for parking, uh, memberships, monthly and annual memberships. And I think next. That's it, that's it. So my daughter's here. If you have any specific questions, we'll do our best to try to answer them. Hi, I'm Erica. And um, my mom and I just feel um, super honored and privileged just to offer this idea as a way to incorporate what we believe could um, all culture and all ideas here in our community so hopefully that this presentation gave a visual of just um, how inclusive uh, a children's coastal mu museum could be to our local businesses, um, people that have been here for decades and decades, honoring um, native culture, as well as celebrating the arts and families to come. So thank you. Thank you. 
fun presentation. Lot yeah, to think that's about. fine. <laughs> Any questions for the ladies? Probably be some later once we get into this, so stay tuned. Next input will be from Jim Pano. Let's let Jim in and move on. There's Jim. Hello, can you all hear me? Yep. Yes. All right. Um, that was a great presentation. I really appreciated that. Um, so first off, I, I'm happy to see uh, something like that um, included. Uh, you know, I want to thank you all for putting this out for public input because it's such a huge thing for our community to take this on. And um, it's going to be a great project, I hope, in the end uh, with everything. Um, First off, I want to make sure that you guys got the letter of the summer of the hotel meeting that we held. I want to make sure that their uh, thoughts were put in there. And, uh, you know, that, that's kind of the basis of some of the comments I have for today. And there's a few things I, I want to touch on just to, to kind of remind you guys. Um, you know, th this whole build out for community space and whether it's community hall, event center, whatever the decision is, I just want to remind everybody that our community's done this in the past. We did it back in the 80s when we built the, the chamber community hall. And I look at our building and I see all the artistic implements and the use and the thought that went into making our building. Um, you know, it was, it was built as Cannon Beach's living room back when they were doing it. And it turned out that way. And I'm very pleased to work there every day. And I appreciate it all the time. Uh, but I thought looking back that that was just a great example of how our community pulled together, worked together and came up with a great project that's benefited our community ever since. Um, and I, I say that for two reasons because a lot of the talk has been about how this can be a community space and I just want to remind everybody that we we still do have a community space, our community hall. We use it all the time, um, not so much during COVID, but it's still available and for use. Uh, so uh, the next thing I want to talk about is I, I know there's been a lot of input from community members and probably not so much that I've seen from the business community. Um, there's a couple thoughts about why I think that is the case is that certainly our businesses are, are busy, tra busy transitioning through COVID and how they're going to get through this winter and everything. So they might not have the time to, to take, take to uh, put thought into this input. So I hope we can continue. Um, and I appreciate Bruce saying early that there's gonna be more input as this process goes, goes along because I hope we can get more input from our business community as we go. Uh, I wanted you to know that I've been reaching out to them every which way to make sure that they're aware and they know and uh, have the opportunity to provide input. You know, that, that being said, there's a couple of concerns that uh, were brought to my attention that I wanted to, to voice and, and Andrew kind of touched on these at the last meeting. Um, the competition that might arise because of this space uh, with our local businesses and other event centers. Um, you know, if, if an event space that size gets used for an event uh, at the same time as one of our other annual events, that, that could create a competition. Um, some of the topics that I've heard might create competition with the history center or the theater um, even our visitor center has a lot of information that, that people are considering to put out there. So um, a lot of those things are already in place in our community. So I, I wanted to um, back up Andrew's mentioned it to not uh, double dip on some of the, the things that are already here. Let's try not to uh, 
um, uh, you know, just overdo any topic. It, it's I, I found, and I hope at the chamber that we're always working with our partners in those areas so that we're not trying to do something that they're doing. It's just better for everybody that way. Um, a lot of the talk is about making this uh, community center or civic center. And I, I wanted to talk about the real quickly what the state law says about a tourism facility. I just wanted to read that definition because, uh, you know, I don't, don't know that everybody has read that and has a complete understanding of what that law uh, refers to. So the tourism related facility, which is what we're looking to build here. And, and I hope that uh, that's how you guys see it. But, but the definition is a conference center, convention center, or visitor information center, and other improved real property that has useful life of 10 or more years and has a substantial purpose of supporting tourism or accommodating tourism activities. Um, and the reason I bring this up is, is um, from what I've gathered so far in the talks and, and, and the funding of this is so far been talked about as transient lodging room tax from the county portion of funding that's gonna come back. So if the funding source is tourism related dollars, then, then this definition is, is gonna be the one that, that fits that. If it's not tourism related dollars, of course, that then it can be really whatever it is. So um, for me, it, it, I, I think about the funding of this and, and I know we'll get into that probably at a later meeting, but that if you're thinking about all the things that it can be used for, you should think it, in my mind, think about the funding source that's gonna support that so that it's appropriate to whatever the, those sources are. So if it's community related activity or a tourism related activity, the funding in my mind and best practices should probably be match the use. So just to kind of, Sum it up, if it's 50% tourism use and 50% visitor use, then I, I would hope that the funding sources are similar. Um, and then just as a definition, you know, a lot of people, when they talk about, well, of course it's a tourism facility because tourists will use it. Um, the substantial purpose um, part of that definition is the, the key part of that. Um, the way I think of, deciding with whether something fits into the ORS 320 rule. I imagine a visitor sitting at their computer thinking about coming to Cannon Beach or going to Seaside or Lincoln City, Tillamook, wherever, Mount Hood, whatever they, their tourism destination. And if it's a tourism activity, then they're gonna look at that and say, that's the reason I wanna go there. Um, this is why restrooms and roads and other things aren't considered tourism related facilities is because they, they're not a draw for tourism. People don't choose to go because there's nice roads or bathrooms, although they certainly are appreciated when they come here. Um, and the rule doesn't really cover those. And so I, I just wanna make sure that if we're gonna use tourism tax funds for that, that we keep that, that rule in mind. And that's how I, manage it. If it's a draw for a visitor to come here over a different community, then to me, it's a tourism draw. I want to also kind of talk about the community hall and the visitor information center. You know, we deal with visitors all the time and uh, not so much with COVID, but uh, we really have a good grasp on what they're wanting and needing because they come in and they ask us for it. And then we direct them if we have that facility in town. And so I really hope that, that whatever we do at the school site will be another uh, destination we can send people and, and be a, that visitor destination. So of course our visitor center deals with visitors all the time and we do a pretty good job of keeping them informed and giving them the information they have. And, and a lot of the information that um, I've heard so far about making sure we educate and, and uh, 
our visitors. We're doing it at the visitor center. We have handouts about Haystack Rock and history and Ecola State Park. And, and so we're doing all of that already. So um, I just wanted to keep that in mind for, for this project. And when in, we talk about using that space for um, conventions and meetings uh, or retreats, uh, we do that at the visitor, uh, at the Chamber Community Hall already as well. And that's one of the areas that I think is gonna be extremely difficult in the, in the future. Um, since COVID hit, our hall rentals are almost non-existent. We have a few when we're allowed to have a, them in there. Um, we managed to squeak one wedding in between extreme levels, but really we've only had a handful of rentals since COVID hit and we hope that returns. But even looking back pre-COVID, most of our uh, use of that community hall was community events. So we donated the hall for use of 50 events uh, each year, um, again, prior to COVID. So if, if, if that were to carry over into this new space, I believe the community would wanna be looking at the donation of that space for those events. And so that's community events that don't really draw tourists or funding, but could potentially have visitors attend it. We also spent in the past three years, um, a real concerted effort to develop the meetings, conferences and retreat um, sector for Cannon Beach. We, we dove into that. We got involved with different um, agencies that work in that, that industry, trying to draw corporations and business meetings to Cannon Beach, because we really see Cannon Beach as a niche market for small meetings. And that's been mentioned as part of the plan here. Um, but that really takes a dedicated staff and a dedicated effort to build momentum there. And after three years of working on that, we really didn't make much uh, headway or, or have much success in that program. Uh, we still are involved in it. We still work at it. But that whole industry uh, of meetings, conferences, and retreats is really kind of dead in the water now because everybody meets via Zoom like we're doing today. And I've talked to a couple of professionals that are in that industry and they say it's likely to change forever. So these type of meetings are gonna continue. The in-person meetings are gonna change forever. Um, and that industry is looking at what I, what I was told was four or five years to bounce back if it ever does. So um, I just wanted to put that information out to you guys because that's been talked about and I wanted to give you some follow up on that. So from, from my view as a chamber director, I really feel like what we need at that site is something unique that is specific to Cannon Beach. Um, the last presentation is a perfect example of that. I could see a lot of applications of of, for kids, because that's always been one of the main questions that we get in the visitor center. And this goes all the way back to 20 years ago when I worked there before. Uh, this question comes up often. I, I've here with my kids. I've been to Haystack Rock. We went up and saw Ecola State Park. We've walked through town. I saw the art galleries. We went to the history center and saw that and today it's raining, what do I do now? Um, that what do I do now has always been a tough question to answer uh, when you're here with your kids and you've already been to the beach. So I love the idea of uh, the, the, the last presentation because I think that would answer that question greatly. So I, I would like to see unique things that would be a draw for visitors to come to Cannon Beach is, is uh, my thought on what could help our community. So that's, that's kind of my um, chamber perspective. And I, I wanted to make sure and give that to you guys. So uh, you had that. Uh, I also wanted to take just a quick second and give you my personal thoughts. Um, I grew up on the coast, 
playing sports and I can't really do that anymore because there's no facilities. All the schools are closed. The gyms are closed. I would love to be able to get together with my buddies and play basketball or pickleball or volleyball or tennis. Uh, anything we can do this time of year indoors would be a great addition uh, to our community and really to our county. Um, and then the one other thought that I had is for the academy and the kids. Um, that is an old gymnasium built for the kids to use. I would love to see our academy um, have the ability to use that in some way for the kids that are going to school in Cannon Beach. That's, so those are a couple of my thoughts on, on the school. So thank you for letting me um, speak and uh, I appreciate the opportunity to give input and I, I will help with this any way I can. And I'm gonna keep asking our business community to, to give you their ideas and their thoughts uh, as, all along the process because we wanna make sure that their voices are heard too. So thank you. Thanks, Jim. And I, I wanna compliment you. That report was one of the better reports I've read in a long time. So it's concise and understandable. <laughs> so very good. Um, there are things I'd like to, uh, we will bring up um, during our deliberation phase and stuff like that. This will be a back and forth. Yeah, and, and maybe just a clarification of the process might help people to realize when they should be giving certain input. So I look forward to helping, helping get that out. Great, thank you. Thanks. Thank you, Jim. Any other questions for Jim? Okay, then we'll move on to our next. Thanks, Jim. Bye. Our next uh, first speaker is Devatia. Is she with us? There she is. Hi, Deb. Can, can you hear me now? Now we can, there you go. Okay. I, my regular Apple is not working today. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm on a little, little, uh, little thing. So I'm gonna hang that phone up. Can, and can you hear me clearly? We can. Yeah. Okay. okay, good, thank you. So I put in a couple things here and I'm not gonna read it all because it's so lengthy, but I just kind of brainstormed through all possibilities. Um, I really feel um, I'm with uh, Kelly on the Nature uh, Interpretive Center and Cultural Heritage. And um, the rest of this, you can just, look at it, it's not everything I'm recommending, it's, it's everything that's possible. So um, that will be something for you to decipher through. Um, I just thought of everything I could think of. Um, as far as a dog park, I spoke to a breeder and several people who have dogs and I also included that as well about the dangers of dog parks um, and liability and so forth. So you can look at that as well. I don't think I really need to read it because you'll read it, right? <laughs> I have a couple of questions. When is the last day to put in input on this? No last day yet. Okay. We'll be. And because we only have 43, it looks like about 43 replies. So I just wanted to know. Um, how long that? That's good to know. So Let me just all now, Deb, just to hang on a second. I'll, I'll announce that since you brought it up. The fact that this process is going to be continual. You can always send in comments to the city hall. Um, what we were asking for in these four days is to get us into gear so that we can start debating um, certain topics, um, but we will always uh, accept. Um, community resident, business owners, whoever's in town, uh, any ideas and concepts they have, they're welcome. So continue, Deb. 
So did, if anybody has any questions about what I wrote there as far as brainstorming, I, I don't think, I think it's pretty self-explanatory um, on considering body, mind, and soul. <laughs> it's kind of, uh, and cultural, I look at this as a cultural upgrade to the city. So I'm gonna read you a poem I wrote because it really does explain how I feel about it. And um, it's inspired by a wondrous world. So I see Cannon Beach as a wondrous world where we reside, nature in abundance, so present and alive. Every day we live in light, the sun rises, the sun sets, the stars, the moon reflect in sight. So now as we turn to the school site, we want to consider what is right and what is guided by that light. It is a sacred site to the Native American ancestors who came before us. In reverence to their history, they have passed on to us to entrust. As we first approach Cannon Beach, it's a, it is haystack rock that we first see. Then as we come closer, the bridge, the river, and this site to be. The river, the ocean, the sky all merge into our vision. So with wisdom, we must choose this decision. A premonition of nature and native design is what unfolds. A place where history, the nature and the local wildlife story is told. A wisdom of eagles that perch in trees, of pelicans that fly along the ocean breeze. The stories in totems that reflect the tribes that were here reflecting the spirit of nature and wildlife and strength and pride that live near. In the spirit of community, a place to gather together, to culturally embrace and to nurture, to learn, to create, to grow, to dance, to sing, to play and share all the stories in our future. It is nature that draws people to Cannon Beach and must be kept forever sacred. A place where photographers capture the beauty in each moment and where artists' paintings are created. Bird watchers come here, as do writers, as in nature one finds inspiration. On the rocky shores, the sea expose starfish and other wonders of the sea that enlighten the imagination. Businesses must know the natural, the natural beauty here will always attract abundance. If you understand the true meaning of what is most important and focus on that presence. To the past, present and future, to protect our elk who graze in the fields, protect our tufted puffins who perch on haystack rock and all that we hold dear, may light shine upon those who walk here. We come to the beach to breathe the fresh air, to see as far as we can see, to hear the ocean waves that carry all our troubles away it rejuvenates the spirit and we can just be. So Cannon Beach is, is a wondrous world. And as Lewis and Clark Expedition and Sacagawea discovered, we too have arrived. So that's the flavor that I present. That's beautiful. Did you Very feel it? <laughs> Did you feel it? <laughs> that's perfect. Thank you, Deb. Thanks, Deb. Yes. Jeff. Okay, with that, um, I will ask if there are any of the participants, attendees, and I will read off the attendees since we are doing that now. Uh, Beachy 47, I believe that's Jan Warman, Barb Knopp, Devatia, Erica Gunther, Jennifer Wyman, Jim Pano, John Bueller, Joyce Lincoln, Rick Hudson, and Stockton Baker. Uh, I have a blue hand raised for BT47, Rusty. Let's uh, see what they have to say. Hello, B Hello everyone. This is not Jan Siebert Ormond. <laughs> <laughs> this is Jan is right below you with a phone number, I think. Yeah. So. This is Susan. Go ahead, Susan. So, um, dear mayor, counselors, and staff, there have been many wonderful ideas proposed about how to make use of the Cannon Beach Elementary School gymnasium, classrooms, and green space. 
I particularly would like to make sure that the Clatsop-Nehalem Confederated Tribe has a large part in making decisions about this place, the location of their ancient village of Nikus that existed here for thousands of years on the banks of Ecola Creek. Present day residents and visitors to Cannon Beach can all benefit from learning more about the history of this place and from participating in firsthand experiences of the lives and practices of the people who made this beautiful place their home. Imagine learning about native plants and their uses, listening to drumming and ancient tales being told and observing special events and ceremonies. I can hardly wait for these things and more to become a reality right here in our own backyard, so to speak. There is one more thing I'd like to emphasize, and that is the history of the use of the gymnasium as the summer home of the Haystack Arts Program. I'd love to see this recognized by the placement of a plaque detailing the history of this program, which benefited hundreds of art, writing, and music students for several decades, including the names of people important in starting and maintaining these classes. Among those people should be Dr. L. Stanley Glarum who was responsible for bringing many well-known and respected musicians from various music fields to Cannon Beach, especially in the field of choral music, which was his specialty. The Haystack Choral Workshop outlasted all the other classes and was an institution every summer until just a few years ago. I would love to see the choral workshops return to Cannon Beach. These are only two of the many wonderful ideas being put forward by the public, but they are the two nearest and dearest to my heart. Thank you for all your work and time being invested in this process. And thank you for hearing my ideas. Thank you, Susan. Um, yeah. uh, I want a question. Uh, wasn't Stan uh, the one who brought Eichmann, Eichelman or whatever? Uh, the professor that teaches the choir directors thing that lasted wow. even long after Haystack program? Exactly. Um, yeah. I'm not sure actually if he was instrumental in bringing Rodney Eichenberger here because he died in 1976. So <laughs> I don't remember when Rodney started coming as the director. There might have been somebody in between. I'm not sure. I uh, I would I would be curious because my uh, cousin's wife was one of these first students, and she remembers Stan. So I don't know if that's because she was here earlier or not. I don't know, uh, but it would be interesting to find out. So yes, I agree the plaque idea or even a memorial of some sort of uh, remembrance system for that whole uh, Haystack program. Definitely. Cool. Thank you very much. Anybody else want to raise a little blue hand at me? Erica? Hello. Hi. Okay. Um, I just wanted to honor that the beautiful letter that um, was just, we just heard from Peachy 47 and just kind of cast vision for um, what could be an occlusive part of the Children's Post Museum um, creating a space that is um, almost a tribute or a beautiful memorial recreation of a tribal village, um, educating visitors and children to come, honoring um, even tribal members or other um, members of those native groups to um, be guides or storytellers in this educational space, you know, honoring what 
is so important to the land, I mean, including them in that vision. So I just wanted to thank um, the reader. I'm sorry, I didn't catch her name, but <laughs> thank you for the reader, Deb. And, um, and we too would want to include and invite um, some type of memorial or plaque as part of a sculpture garden um, outside. So just to kind of continue that vision of inviting, including and recreating um, what could be a great aspect as part of education. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, last chance for little blue hands. One, two, three. Okay, we're gonna go on to Kelly and she'll do her wrap up summary thingy and go from there. All right. Okay, um, so this summary this time I hope is gonna be a bit more complete than some of the others um, we had previously and certainly from when we first started these uh, a couple weeks ago. Um, hope we can all kind of appreciate how much this has, this has grown after just four meetings. So I went through everything that we've received so far, uh, made sure um, that it seemed like all the comments, the old and new ones, online submissions, uh, input that people have brought here and emails and letters that have been received have been uh, taken into consideration. And one of the more major changes that I added on here is um, there have been um, various concerns brought up. And so uh, we have a little section to, to summarize those as, as they continue to come in as well. All right, so next we have just our overview. And this just gives you um, that glimpse that we've been looking at of the growing list <coughs> of ideas and the various things that people have been supporting. Um, but as I mentioned last time, there was a, a very organized group from the pickleball supporters. Uh, so I actually have a next gra another graph after this one um, because it almost looks like <laughs> we have like 90% of people just talking about pickleball. But the reality is, as you can see on this next page, um, there's been a lot of input uh, as, as you've been listening and reading from what everyone has said for a range of different ideas and many of them that are supporting each other. And I think we're starting to get a good idea of the overlapping vision that a lot of the community is, is seeing. And I, I hope this is gonna, the summary is gonna kind of help capture that a little bit. <coughs> Sorry, excuse me. Okay, so next into the details of some of the things that we've had added. Um, the gym comments, there hasn't been anything new added over the last uh, five days. Um, just kind of support for some of these ideas that have already come into play. I put these asterisks on the top four just because those have been um, more or less for most of the people who have uh, mentioned support for these ideas have uh, talked about them going along with each other and being part of these sort of multi-use recreation for facilities or uh, multi-use community spaces. Uh, and then next was outside. We had um, increasing amounts of comments relating now to uh, the idea of having a space for outdoor concerts and um, a lot of emphasis on nature walks or open green space with sitting areas and picnic areas uh, and also growing support for community garden. Um, we have gotten a few comments now um, supporting the idea of paid parking and then um, We've already heard the dog park one from earlier. Okay, and then we have for the classroom, uh, again, growing support for the idea of multi-use classroom spaces that could be dynamic for small groups. Um, there's been several mentions for the Nature Interpreted Center. A lot of people have em emphasized the need of, uh, the desire to make sure that the food bank space is maintained. Um, we've had a lot of comments coming in for combinations of history, interpretive area, and kind of cultural heritage focuses. And there's been special attention to our, a lot of this time. And we now have, um, as we heard from Jen and Erica, the uh, new idea for a, a children's museum or center. Okay. And so this is the new page that I added, which is uh, some of the concerns, and I think when uh, Jim was talking for Jim was talking about for the chamber, um, this addresses kind of some of those big items that they uh, that the lodging group had 
um, in particular wanted to address or keep in mind while these discussions are coming. So um, cost has been a big one. Um, the fund, fund use and issue of parking, what does what happens with this building mean for, for parking has been a ongoing theme, whether that means it's um, being used to uh, as a way that's going to make parking even worse, or if it's going to include parking and comments like that. Um, potential competition, uh, if you make it another large meeting and rental space, or if that's even necessary. Um, and then just a couple of the small of the comments that we've had um, like a little bit about dog park uh, as being potentially a danger or liability and um, whether the space is something that wildlife would still be be coming to and visiting. All right. Uh, then these are just a collection of kind of the some of the other miscellaneous comments. I don't believe anything new is added onto this one. Uh, this is just a little click summaries of a couple of things that you heard that don't really categorize into those other specific areas. Um, and most of them, I think, have been brought up more than once, talking about, uh, in particular, um, honoring uh, Indigenous opinion and uh, a little bit of a vision of that people are having of uh, wanting things to be community driven. And uh, again, the theme of parking. That I think that's it for updates we have so far until we get the new, whatever new additions and comments come in. Everybody go. Uh, very good, thank you, Kelly. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, any follow-up uh, from the council or staff? I just appreciate everybody's input. I thought we heard a lot of unique things today and it was encouraging. And um, a little bit for me, uh, to, this is for the council. Um, we've completed our fourth input session. And so we need uh, a meeting, right? Uh, we need to um, have an opportunity to talk about what all this meant to you, what sort of direction you think we're headed, uh, and what some of the next steps are. So we'll be trying to schedule that with you. Good. Uh, since we're doing a... Uh, uh, meeting on the 9th uh, with uh, Dick and Doug. Uh, could we add to the end of that some scheduling and discussion about uh, how we want to pro proceed? Uh, what would be our next month's schedule, maybe? Things like that. Yeah, we can't. Right now, the uh, ninth is getting very heavy, but we can put that on. Oh, the ninth is the work session or the regular yes. meeting. Okay. This is just a scheduling. I'm just suggesting a scheduling talk talk about not okay. in, getting into any depth yet. Um, I am personally working on my thoughts and organizing things. So I'd, I'd like to have some more time to do that. Um, but um, especially after today's comments. So... Uh, Sam, we'll do that and uh, we'll call it uh, next steps and scheduling. Perfect. Okay, then. Uh, if we're not anything left on this topic, anything for good of the order? Just want to mention that we have a coffee with the counselors on um, Monday, this next Monday at 10 a.m. So anybody who wants to talk about the school um, or any other issue or idea, um, feel free to zoom in and we will be able to talk about that at 10 a.m. on Monday. The Zoom link is on the city's website. Sam, I see on my screen, Devotea has a hand up. Is that on yours? Oh, sorry, I turned that away. Um, okay. Um, Rusty, let's pull Deb in and see what she has to say. By the way, Sam, my hand is yellow, not blue. Oh, really? Yeah. Can you hear me? Hi, yes. Deb. Yes, please. Can you add mold to the, um, if there's a mold problem on that one for the um, checking the 
um, asbestos and all of that kind of stuff. Um, and we'll also, all of that. Yeah. pardon? We will be doing all of that. That's okay. Our... And can you tell me when the February, you said February 9th, the Doug Dorr and, and uh, Dick Basher speaking? Mm -hmm. Correct. That's correct. Okay. That's correct. And then one other thing, if I can help in any way, what we found with the North Coast Rocky Habitat, um, we had a really hard time getting people to, you know, write in or email suggestions. So we came up with a form where they just kind of checked things and, you know, maybe, I mean, I had to go around and actually collect a lot of them because people just procrastinate a lot. So if I can help in any way, I'm putting this out on Facebook with a, a form of you know, when we get it nailed down to a smaller amount, maybe people can just kind of, maybe they're not going on the website and um, doing it. And maybe some other options for them to like a check mark thing, you know, check, check, check. And it's easier for them to respond that way instead of writing letters and so forth. Because we found that with the Rocky Coast Habitat, they wouldn't, some of them didn't write letters and you had to kind of, the checklist thing worked better. Um, so if I can help in any way with that or Kelly and Kelly and I can come up with that or whatever, I would be happy to do that and put it out on Facebook and with them to turn it into you. So let me know and I'd be happy to help. Thank you, Deb. Uh, yes, that is a constant concern with things that we do in city. So um, I suspect once we get more into detailing out what we think are the things we want, that's when the naysayers will come out of the woodwork and then the yaysayers will be on top of the naysayers. And so this is going to be fun. Okay. Um, thank you. Thank you. Anything else? Go to the order. Last call. Okay. We are adjourned. Thank you all. See you thank next you. Month. Good night. Thank Good night. you. Thanks.